everyone. Today I decided to do something a little bit different um, and show you my box of goodies as far as scrap and collage materials. So I do do quite a bit of mixed media, uh, both in sketchbooks and canvases, and I incorporate an awful lot of uh, collage materials in those works. So I thought I would show you a little bit of the pieces that I have in here. I'm not going to obviously, this is chock full, so I'm not going to show you everything that's in here, but I'm just going to show you a sampling, how I created them, and how I'm using them. So the original inspiration for this is I took a fabulous, fabulous mixed media, or, or I took a couple of mixed media classes from this artist named Lally Mill. And her classes are amazing. She is a really great instructor. She's very inspirational. And she has a lot of great process uh, pieces of her courses where she shows you how to make a lot of really interesting materials. And a lot of that is based around uh, not only diff using different media to, to create them, but also to uh, create them in the form of collage materials. <clears throat> So I'm just going to show you some of these pieces, and some of these pieces I had created before I took that class, some of them I created after, some of them I created during. And I'll probably go through some of my sketchbooks that I did during her courses, and um, maybe some of the smaller pieces of art that I have. So basically this is a catch-all box. I put everything that is large enough to save, little tiny scraps of just about everything, um, as you will see, I, I also, if I have little watercolor swatches or something that I'm not using anymore, I will put them in here. The only thing to know with watercolor swatches is they are not, um, they're not water resistant. So if you put water on top of these, you're, you're going to get a little bit of bleed, if not a lot of bleed, depending on the color. So, but I keep them in here and then I can either cover them with... Uh, some sort of medium to a clear medium to keep them from running or I can just go with that the fact that they run with when I'm trying to glue them down or something like that because I do like happy little accidents so and then I also have little scraps in here that are from um, what I've used for image transfers so I will often so I have a laser printer I have both a laser printer and a regular printer um, I, I use the laser printer the most for, uh, for mixed media art because I can do a lot of image transfers with that. So I have a lot of these floral books, um, <clears throat> a, a whole bunch of things from Dover and other publishers that will give you copyright free images. And so those copyright free images I'll print out and sometimes I'll make them bigger or smaller with my laser printer and then I can do image transfers. And I'll actually do a video sometime in the future, if I remember, <laughs> on just image transfers because those are super fun and they're actually not that hard. There's a variety of ways to do them, but my the most frequent way that I use is um, using acrylic medium. So I will put acrylic medium over the image and a little bit on the canvas or the paper, then I will turn it around and then I will um, rub it really hard so that the actual ink comes off into the acrylic medium and then you let it dry and then once it's dry there's a process to actually get the paper off so you just have the image left. So that's really cool, um, but if you do do that just know that your image is going to be reversed. So there's ways to do it where it won't be reversed, but that's the most common way that I use. And then some of these papers, um, like this one is from a larger sheet of jelly prints that I made. And I'd love to do some jelly printing on the channel too if anyone is interested in seeing that. Uh, it's actually a really easy way to make abstract papers. Um, it's really great for using with floral images or actual florals. Um, I won't go too much into it now, but it's it's really fun. There's actually a lot of really cool uh, jelly print uh, videos here on YouTube, so feel free to check those out because that's a that's a really fun way to get a bunch of papers. And this was, of course, a larger sheet that I had done in a session where I made the jelly prints and then tore them up so that I could use them in collage. That's what all of these are as well. 
So let's see. So these, I used a variety of materials. And then again, these are just little pieces. So this is all either acrylic ink or um, black. Well, it's mostly acrylic ink. Let's, let's just leave it at that. <laughs> um, and so I've used a variety of different ways to make marks on here. Some of this is bubble wrap, for example. Um, I've used brushes and a variety of different things. This is an old sheet of paper that I had some permanent stamps on. I figure I can use that and cut it up. I also put a lot of magazine scraps in here. So something like this, like you, you may not even really be able to tell what this is. I, I can't. I mean, maybe it's part of a couch and, and some wallpaper in the back, but you can use just a piece of it to get color or texture, or you could use some of these flower images. So I keep a lot of magazine scraps. Basically anytime I get a magazine or a catalog in the mail, I go through and I tear out images that I either like the colors or the images. Like here's here's an image of something out a window. It's all really fun. I keep them. I, I don't keep everything. I, I become more discerning because otherwise my, my pile will be incredibly huge. <laughs> but uh, but it's a great way to recycle and reuse magazines that you would otherwise just be putting in the trash or the recycling. And so this is an old book page. Um, I think I got this, oh, I can't remember. It might have been as some sort of set of old book pages actually, but, but I have a lot of old books that I use this way as well. But this already had this image on here and then on the other page I added some acrylic ink and uh, use some stencils to put some white ink on it. This is obviously just a starting point. This is a whole page, but I may end up tearing it up and putting it somewhere. Okay, and then this is a uh, sheet of just sort of random watercolor images that I punched out circles with a, with a circle punch, and then I kept the, uh, I don't even know what you call it, the excess from that and then I plan to use that in something else. And then in here I also have some old wrapping paper because it had this really pretty bird image. And let's see, what other kinds of papers? Again, that's like a little test stamp, stamp paper with some pen marks on it. Um, you can really use these in a variety of ways. This is from a magazine, but it's just a texture. Uh, these are some, this is from a magazine again, but it's, it's topographic map image that I thought was really cool. So you don't want to use whole images. That's probably not a good way to go. But <clears throat> but you certainly could use partial images and I think you're probably safe from copyright. And again, this is just a little sheet of paper that I had as a scrap that I used to test some watercolors on. So a variety of things. Um, this is part of a postcard that I don't know where that came from. <laughs> And then I just have some general book pages as well. I think that also came from that same set of uh, old vintage papers, but then I also have some from actual books. Uh, either I'll just wipe off or, or dab off color that I felt like there was too much color on it, and then I'll just build upon these when I make future, um, future mixed media pages. And I'm going to see if there's anything else. Oh, yep. So here, <clears throat> this is some paper with some walnut ink on it. I just used a little cap to make some marks. And I actually have quite a bit of that in here. This is some tissue paper that I did the same kind of thing on. And these are great. Tissue paper is also really great for mixed media because when you glue it over something, it becomes sort of translucent. And so you can see what's under it and then you'll still have these marks over the top, so that's really great. And then these are just you know, swatch sheets that I may have run over with a roller. Um, here's some more tissue paper that I put some white ink through a stencil over the top. Let's see, these are some paper towels that have ink in them. I just took a piece of that. Uh, and you'll notice things like paper towels will actually become much more sturdy once you have ink and everything in them. I clearly have a lot of the walnut ink ones. Here's just a, a piece of an old book page. So lots of things like that, and you can you can really use whatever you want. Um, here's a little magazine page with just a piece of uh, like a wood image. 
Let's see. And then I also have some books that had old maps in them. And those are always really fun to put down in there. And then I also have some patterned tissue paper here. So that's fun. Looks like it had a little bit of washi tape on it. I left that. So like I was saying, the possibilities are endless. I think I've probably shown you most types of paper I have in here. Oh, here's an embossed piece of paper. And then this was a part of a paper leaf that I had printed out. Um, there's also some images that I had gotten off of Pinterest that I printed out. I, I probably will not use this image whole. I'll probably tear it up. So that is just a taste of some of the many, many things that you can do with mixed media. Here's a book page with some of that walnut ink that was on the floor. I had to just get that up. <laughs> All right, and, and another Pinterest image. And this is actually a piece of the edge of one of a prior works that I did. It has some texture on here, it has ink and paint, and then any scraps I will save and put in this box for use again later. And this kind of thing is really fun. This was a catalog with mirrors in it, so I just cut out, or I usually tear, I usually don't cut. And uh, so then I have this really cool image of a mirror. I could either leave the mirror image in there, paste some more stuff on top, or just use that as is. All right, so I think that's all I would like to show you here in this basket of goodies, or box of goodies. And again, the, the possibilities are endless. I encourage you to just make a mess and make some of these papers on your own. Let me know what different types of art forms you're interested in that I could be demonstrating on this channel. I'd already talked about jelly prints. Um, I could also talk about making these papers from scratch. Uh, there's also the possibility of going through magazines and then distressing them and, and making them into little works of art on their own. Um, I don't know if I have any of those handy up here. There are some in here though. Uh, tissue papers, just mixed media art in general. I'm happy to share any of that. So please just give me your comments below of things you might be interested in seeing in the future. All right, but that's it for today. Have a great day. Feel free to like and or subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.